There we go. All right, I think we're live. Hello, Artie people, and welcome to another episode of Jerry's Live. My name is Emmy Klein, and I'm your host this evening. And as you can see, we have a guest. Yay! <laughs> uh, everyone, please welcome Jimmy Leslie, the resident artist and director for the Fine Art Collective uh, Education Program for Windsor Newton. So, yay! welcome to the show. It's always a pleasure having you with us. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Uh, now, everybody, Jimmy has an amazing show planned for us, as per usual. I mean, it's, the show is always amazing when you come on, and I'm so excited to see this because we have a, it's a new product, right? We do. We have a new product. Yeah, tonight Tonight we're talking about uh, Liquitex Basics Acrylic Fluid. Um, so I'll get into more of that as we as we kick it off. I'm very excited about that. So if you are all interested in this new product that Jimmy's about to show us, make sure you go to the website, jerrysartorama.com. And in the search bar at the top, type in today's class code, which is JL287. So 287, uh, type that in the, the search bar, and then that should bring up the teacher's cart, and that should show everything that we're going to be going over. So without further ado, I will head it off to you, Jimmy, and get my yeah. thing off the camera here. Sounds good. Let's kick it off. Hey everybody, good to see you. Uh, thank you so much. As Emmy said, my name is Jimmy Leslie. I am the resident artist and director of the Fine Art Education Program uh, for the brands Liquitex and Windsor and & Newton, their sister brands. And tonight we're gonna be talking about Liquitex Basics Acrylic Fluid. This is a new product. So when we look at the, Li Liquitex makes all acrylics, right? So we have uh, professional ranges and we have what we call introductory ranges. Now, notice that I said introductory range. I didn't say student range. A little bit of a, a little bit of semantics, maybe, but I've I've kind of changed the way I talk about a, a student or a range to to say introductory range because. I think sometimes when hear people hear student, they think to themselves, well, I'm not taking a class anywhere or I'm not matriculated or I never went to college. You know, I'm not in a college class or anything else. So this is an introductory range. And I really want to talk about kind of keeping things a little bit more affordable tonight. That's always a great thing. Um, I'm, inflation is always nutty the last two years. So I, I like to try to keep things a little bit more affordable for you. Now, before we do that though, let me go to my overhead view and I wanna share a few things with you. Um, obviously you're here, uh, you're here uh, at Jerry's Facebook Live, um, but I've got some social media stuff. So on Instagram, you can find Jerry's at Jerry's Artorama. We're gonna be talking about Liquitex tonight. So Liquitex official. And then if you go to at TF, a-C-N-A, T-F-A-C-N-A, that stands for the Fine Art Collective North America, and that's the education program that I run for both Liquitex and Windsor and & Newton, so we have live streams there and many demos, and then, of course, that's me, Jimmy Leslie Art, you can follow me on Instagram as well, and, you know, when I first uh, got on here with Emmy, before uh, before we started and kicked it off with you, she said, oh, it must be cold where you guys are. I'm in New Jersey. Uh, it is a little bit cold here today, uh, but also I've got my Liquitex hat on and I've also got this cool sweatshirt. So this is our new merch on, on the Liquitex website. So I'm keeping warm fashionably with the brand, but also it is chilly in New Jersey. Um, I'm gonna tell you one other thing and then we're gonna kick it off and let's get the color out and let's start painting. Um, at the end of this month, I will be back again. I bring that up because I just came back literally the other day from a vacation in Italy where it was beautiful and it was warm. So I feel like I should be painting some sort of Italian landscape. I'm gonna do something a little bit different for you uh, that tonight. Uh, but at the end of the month, we will be talking about Windsor and Newton gouache on May 30th. I'm gonna do something uh, Italian inspired then. So that'll be, that'll be fun. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, I love, I love that. It's a favorite place of mine. So let's get down to it in this uh, in this hour that we have together. So uh, two paintings I want to show you right here. These are both done with Basics Acrylic Fluid. Uh, and I'm going to do a slightly different version of these. I'm going to do uh, one based on this photograph right here. Um, these are all a creek that is near my home. Uh, and I like to kayak on it. Uh, creeks are often, I think, a little bit smaller. This is this is this feeds into a river, and I like to kayak along here. So I want to deal with the water scene with you with basics acrylic fluid, and I wanted to do that 
uh, simply because the name, uh, basic acrylic fluid is the most fluid paint in the Liquitex range. So let's put out some of these colors and then I'll show you a little bit more of these and what we're doing and uh, how you can think about painting as well. So I've got my palette over here and I'm gonna put out, I'm gonna put out just seven colors. Uh, so I'm gonna put out a titanium white. So this is what our basics acrylic fluid, uh, little flip top cap we have on here. Um, this one is, so here, this is fluid. So I'm gonna shake this probably hear that fluid nature of it. And we're gonna put some out. I mean, I was gonna say, I can hear it, um, but I know sometimes Zoom uh, minimizes yeah. the sound. We were just talking yeah, about Yeah, you might, you, but so that, might, that's all right. So, yeah, yeah no say, problem. I can hear it slightly. So I'm gonna do this. <laughs> there you go. We can, right, we can see that start to move. And then, so I'm gonna use a uh, titanium white. I'm going to use light blue permanent light blue permanent. So that color is going to be my cooler blue. So I'm going to put that out. And then I'm going to put out another blue. I'm going to uh, this time use, oops, I'm getting their camera there. Uh, cerulean blue hue, cerulean blue hue. That's going to be a warmer blue. So I'm going to put that out right here. And then I'm going to do two colors in the red family. Um, this time I'm gonna take uh, this one, which is medium magenta, medium magenta. And that is going to be a cooler red, a very pink color actually, but in the red family. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna follow that up with primary red and primary red is gonna be a warmer red. So what I'm doing right here now is I'm putting out cool and warm versions of primary colors. So it's what we call a, uh, a split, a split complementary uh, palette. So here I'm gonna put out this uh, cooler uh, cadmium yellow light hue. Uh, it's a cooler, got a, a very nice greenish hue to it. Now I know you wouldn't see that when you see the yellow right here, but when I mix it with the blue, particularly the light blue permanent, it's gonna give us some really bold greens. So let's put that out. And then I'm gonna put an earthier, yellow out, if you will. Really, you might say brown. This is raw sienna. I'm going to put that out. And that's going to, I'm, that'll be a nice earthy color that will help knock down colors. If I make them too intense, I can mix with them. Um, the other things I'm going to use is I've got uh, some palette knives here for mixing. And then I've got two brushes I'm using. Uh, this one is the Basics uh, Flat number 10. Uh, so flat brush here, it's got uh, a very flat edge to it. I almost specifically use uh, or, or uh, flat brushes. I like that you can get a really thin edge when you use it on edge like that, and you can get a wide stroke as well. But I also have uh, number six round, number six round. So I'm going to use that to start sketching out. So let's show you something here. Uh, I'm going to take my raw sienna. It's a pretty neutral color and I'm just going to get some of that on my brush. Now, let's take a look at our reference photo before I do that. Now, when I look at this reference photo, um, this is a little bit different than, or actually maybe quite a bit different. If you look at this image of this creek, right, you've got ripples in the water right there. All right. And this one, you've also got ripples that are, are not, you know, not quite as, um, a lot of ripply, that's not really a word, as, as this now? one right here. It's, it's a word for us now. A little bit more ripply. subtle, I suppose, right? Yeah. yeah. No, a little bit more it. subtle. It's the word of the day. <laughs> right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of take a different version. I think this is a little bit simpler if you're starting to work with water um, because you're not dealing with all those little interactions of light and dark. It's, uh, it's, it's really a transition from the top of the sky, we'll notice here from dark down to light, and then in the water here from light over to dark. And we have the same sort of mirror-like thing happening here. Now I know this looks super, super dark. I'm gonna to try to break up that dark field and show you how you can do that. But here's the first thing I'm gonna say about this. Uh, I'm gonna work really quickly because we have an hour uh, and I've got a lot to say in that time. So I'm gonna to try to work fast. Now, one of the things you can do if you have a photograph you're working from, you print that out, Simply take, and I'll, I'll grab my ruler here, and I'm not going to do this just for, for economy of time, but you could take a, you know, a dark marker, a black marker, and just 
run a line down corner to corner, run another one corner to corner, and then measure, run down the middle. And then you can measure again and run across the middle there. Give you kind of a union, flag, union jack design there or an asterisk design right there. And that can help you figure out where things are. I will do this though. I'm just gonna kind of wing it real quick. I said I wasn't, but I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna put some paint marks right across there because I can do that quick without the ruler. And it's gonna be close enough. I'm being pretty steady handed. Yeah, I don't think and I've ever seen anybody paint a straighter line in my life. Yeah, that's pretty, right? That's, that's, that's <laughs> fairly good, right? That's pretty good. Okay, so why is this important? This is important because when we look at this center area of the composition, if this is our center line in the image, our center area is just below that, what we call our horizon line. So let's just come over here. I'm going to move the palette off to the side since I'm not mixing color at the moment. And I'll get back to showing you that color, but I wanna have our image in here and a little bit of, uh, let's raise this actually up just a little bit more. There we go. And have our reference photo over here. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna realize that from the top corner here, this mass of trees, if I, if I put those same lines across, kind of do that. And I'm doing this with a brush, keep that in mind. I'm doing with a brush, you may feel I don't know, sketching out a design, you might say to yourself, I don't feel super steady with a brush, Jimmy. It's, it's, I don't know, it's just a little, it's a little weird to me. Sometimes people don't, um, that's fine. You could use something like, a, you know, a, a, a white pencil here. And, and here's the other thing. I have this magenta ground on this right now. And you might be wondering, I don't know if that's something that's popped up in the chat. And let me, let me say this to you as well. Any questions that you have, at all. Please, we already have a please. lot. Oh, okay, good, good. I'm, I'm glad gonna, to hear that. Yeah, because I was let you get into it just a little bit, but I know we have a ton. Awesome, and then you can interrupt me at any point, Emmy, to ask questions because guys, I wanna tell you something. Um, I'm an open book. So I want you to be able to ask me about the basics acrylic fluid that I'm using tonight. I want you to be able to ask me about your general acrylic questions, process, because I'm gonna paint for you right now. Uh, inspiration, anything, total open book for you. I don't mind, I, I rather love questions. I love challenging questions. So let's get some stuff down here and then we will get into that. Um, so I put a magenta ground down because I like the idea of competing colors. And what I mean by that is instead of, I, I find that it can be really uh, intimidating working on a white ground. It just, even something small, this is only five by seven in size, that can feel really intimidating. And so I like to have a colored ground down. And the reason I like to do that, and I will show you, I, I have my, uh, I'm going to rinse off my brush. I've just got my um, little plastic cup here. And I've got this funky little, I don't even know where I got this. I don't know if, I don't know if you guys have something like this, Emmy, but it's, it's just a little, you probably have other brush cleaners, but it just kind of. We like, have ours kind of built in to the oh, great. one I use Perfect. all the time is the brush washing basin. So it has yeah. three wells and it has one that um, is kind of, it's got the, the texture at the bottom. I'll pop it into yeah. the teacher's cart yeah. for the Let's, show so that people can check it out. Yeah, kind of, kind of nice way to kind of get the paint off your brush. But always if I'm doing that though, uh, I like to make sure that if, if I have any excess, I'm wiping it off the brush first so I'm not creating as much waste water. So I'm just gonna clean that off. And then I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna take my flat brush. Um, and, and what I'm gonna do is come in and take, we'll move this over now. And I'm gonna take some of this titanium white and I'm gonna take some of this cerulean blue hue and I'm gonna mix that up. Now, here's something I'm doing guys and, and I wanna, I, I kind of hate that phrase, do as I say, not as I do. Uh, it feels a little, I don't know, it's like I'm a headmaster talking to you and that's not, <laughs> that's not the way I want to be. But um, I, I am mixing with the brush right now for economy because I'm working fast. And as I said, we only have about an hour together. So I want to really block in quickly. Uh, oftentimes I will mix with a... Uh, a palette knife. And the reason that I'll do that is because, first of all, you can mix up a larger quantity of paint with a palette knife. 
than you can with the brush. And the brush can get clogged up with colors and, and make everything sort of muddy. And, and you, you then dip that in another paint and that gets that one muddy. So, um, you know, just be careful about that. I'm, I'm doing this now again for economy. Um, so I've mixed up this cerulean blue with a little white and I'm gonna come in and take a little bit more of that cerulean blue and just brush that in here. So it's getting darker from top down to here. I'm gonna hop over my middle ground right here where uh, these this tree and these reeds uh, lead back to another hunk of land there. And then this, this creek, if I remember, kind of curves around to the right, not that that matters. But I'm gonna take some of these same colors and I'm gonna come down here and I'm really kind of creating a mirror image. So I'm just laying this in rather quickly. And then I'm gonna come in with a little bit of white and lighten as I get up here. So I'm just getting that kind of opposite thing happening right here, really kind of opposite thing. So I wanna show you something before I get into blocking in the rest. If, and it goes back to this magenta ground. Why, why do I have that down? So here's an original, you know, here's another image I painted and you can see some of the magenta coming through in these areas. You can see it down here too, and it gives a violet feel to some of the, uh, the water down there. And you can see it a bit up in the sky as well. I like that, first of all, again, if I can work quickly, and if these were white gaps because of the paper, and by the way, I'm using, this is uh, basics uh, paper. So it's a canvas textured paper. Again, talking about working affordably tonight, um, so with this nine by 12 pad, you've got 12 sheets in there, way less expensive than working on canvas. And particularly if you're trying a lot of things and studies and working quickly and maybe sketching outside, um, you can you can kind of bang through those. I've also got some tape on here too. Um, you can use almost anything. I don't know if you can see that. This is just a Scotch, you know, 3M brand, um, but it says delicate surface. Now, I know you probably can't read that there. I actually have to get my reading glasses on. Okay, we can actually read, read that quite well. It's, it's oh, can you? Okay, can on you? the screen, yeah. So it's me with my <laughs> reading glasses. Um, this says it's a gentle removal. I, now I just noticed this before when I was before I, I went on with you guys. It says gentle remover, removal, washi, W A S H I, painter's tape. I just bought it because it's delicate surface, so it doesn't pull up the paper when I remove it. I do not know what washi is. I'm going to have to look that up. Do, washi, do you know that? I mean? Yes, uh, I've actually heard of it. Oh, I've used it a lot. It's um, oh. something that I usually use in, uh, people use it in a lot more crafting. Um, oh. They usually come in all kinds of really fun patterns. So you can leave them on as like a decorative border type gotcha. thing. Gotcha, uh, okay. Different shapes and sizes, but they usually have like a very thin, almost transparent quality to them. And yes. it's kind of almost like papery. Gotcha. That yeah, that's how this feels. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So guys, so I have the color now. now, but why magenta? Because that might be something that's in this. Why would I choose that? Um, in this case, I knew that I was using a lot of cool colors in this. And when you think about your color wheel and you look at, you look at your uh, uh, complementary colors, your green and red are going to complement each other, right? They're going to next to each other. They're going to sort of vibrate and make each other pop mixed together, they can cancel each other out and gray each other down. So I just like that you get these little moments within the cool. I don't find it disturbing. I find it something that's quite nice. In this other one, uh, this other scene, um, this is much less subtle. It's, it, it doesn't have the magenta, so don't go looking for that. You can see up here, there's a little bleed of a darker violet right there. Um, mm -hmm. And you can see a little drip of it right there. So when we look at this image, anywhere where you see, oh, there's a little violet blue, there's a little violet blue, there's a little violet blue. Those are areas that just, I didn't cover. But again, because it's not white poking through, it doesn't look unfinished. It serves to help as a basis. So I can work quickly when I have a ground like that. So speaking of working quickly, let me get more of the colors down. So when we're talking about uh, basics acrylic fluid, again, this is an introductory range. I'm just going to clean off my brush and I'm going to come in and let's bring our 
a reference photo back into it. I'm gonna I'm gonna work with a, a rather dark green to begin with, and I'm gonna build up with lighter areas on top. So I'm gonna take some of that same cerulean blue here, and I'm gonna take some of that. What did I say that was? I'm, I I forgot already. It was cadmium. Oh, cadmium yellow light hue. Cadmium yellow light hue. I'm gonna take just a little bit of that, bring that in, and a little bit more of that, and then I'm gonna come in here and just block in that tree shape. And again, let me move this over a little bit so at the same time, you can see our reference photo there. So I'm gonna block that in and I'm being real quick about this. Now, the thing with Basics Acrylic Fluid, it is the most fluid paint that we have in the Liquitex line of paint. So you can see I can move across that surface very quickly. I don't need to add any water to that. Uh, I know there's a lighter area up here uh, in in the uh, in the reference photo, and that's kind of su similar to what's happening over here as well. So I'm going to lighten this a little bit more, and I'm going to block in this whole area. And you lightened that green with yellow, not white, correct? Correct. Yeah, yeah, I did. I lightened it with that. Um, and and so so you think about that. A lot of times, what happens is people, and and here's what I'm doing right now too. So. I have this mixture of cerulean blue hue here, the um, the cadmium yellow light hue right here. So watch, I'm gonna take some of that, lighten that a bit. But one of the things I thought to myself is uh, after, after putting in this area, I thought to myself, I think it needs to be a little darker. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that medium magenta and that because it's the complementary color to green, it's just knocking it back and darkening it a little bit, right? So instead of using a black to darken or a white to lighten, I'm coming in and I'm using some of these other colors. Um, now, okay, so, and I can do the same thing here. I can take a little bit of that primary red and make it a bit darker still mm -hmm. for an area down here and darken that. Now, again, a lot of times I think people will use white often too much to lighten colors. And then, Everything can get a little too pasty, a little wash, uh, washed out, a, a little desaturated. I'm gonna come back in here again, take the same mixture. I'm gonna lighten this. I'm, I am gonna take a little white now. I wanna cool this out a bit. And I'm gonna take a little bit of the raw sienna, make that a little bit earthier. And that's gonna serve for those sort of reeds back there in the distance. And a little bit of what's happening here, I'll start to start to bring a little bit of that out. Now, when I do this right now, here's here's the thing I want you all to to kind of think about with an image, um, anything that you're painting. So the images that I have here and here, these completed images started out the very same way. They started out like that. That doesn't look like much, right? That's that's and 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 this is important, guys. I often think, and I want to I go face to face with you now to make this point because I think it's an important one. I think what happens a lot of times is you start off, well, it depends on the given day. Sometimes I'm painting and everything goes my way and I'm like, wow, I'm good at this. <laughs> I, 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 you know, and I, I mean, we should be, right? We should be proud, I'm being silly, but we should be proud of what we do. And I've been at this a long time. So I have days like that. But I also have days where I, I'm painting and I'm going, okay, this and this are like, they belong to two different people. And I'm like, what is happening? Like, I, I've been at this for decades and I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing, right? But paintings go through stages. So a lot of times there's a clunky stage to begin with because I'm just trying to establish big concepts. Then it gets a little more refined and I'm like, oh, we're on track. Things are going good. And a lot of times though, things take another dive too, because I try not to be afraid if, if something's not working to totally scrap what I have and, and, you know, go back to the proverbial drawing board. So let's, let's get back into it and we'll, we'll take a look at where we are here again. Okay, so we'll get back to this. Um, now, when we're looking at basic acrylic fluid, and let's see, let's, I'm gonna mix up now. What I'm gonna do with my um, reference photo is I'm gonna pull out some of the lighter areas of the tree so we can differentiate 
um, what's going on up in here and not just have a big mass. Um, when you're looking at these products, there are 48 colors. And I'm just gonna light, I'm gonna take the uh, light blue permanent. This is gonna give me a brighter green and a little bit of white just to, just to make that a little bit lighter. Now I have a uh, question while yeah. you're walking back into that color that you had, you had laid that yellow mix on your palette down a bit ago, and then you talked to us with your, you know, the face on the screen for another minute, and then yeah. you went back into it, and it's still wet. What is the dry time like of these paints? Um, you, you know, so dry, it's a good question. Dry time is always uh, is always very dependent upon your atmosphere. And just so I can give you a, a what's happening in my studio, which could be obviously very different from where you are. I've got a, a thermostat on the wall. It is uh, 63 Fahrenheit in here. So it's not super warm at all. Uh, it's 52% humidity. It has been raining for like, a, it's like Portland, Oregon and New Jersey right now. Um, so it's very humid in my studio compared to how it would normally be. So part of it is the amount of paint that I put down. Um, it's not, it's not too thin. So like anything else, right? When something's uh, thicker or more volume of something, it's going to take longer to dry. Um, and in this case, it's really humid in here. I have painted on years ago on uh, Cape Cod. I remember went out in the morning, I was on vacation, went out in the morning while the rest of my family was asleep and I painted and I was under an awning um, and, uh, you know, just painting in the town and uh, it was drizzling out. So I could, you know, I could paint like that without it, you know, disturbing what I was doing. Uh, and for an hour and a half, two hours, I, it never dried on my palette, never. Yeah, it's, which is kind of crazy. You don't think that with acrylics, uh, but generally speaking, yeah, I, I I'm, I'm, I not to, not to avoid the question, Emmy, but it, it's like they're going to be similar to any other acrylics. Um, but yeah, I, I would kind of determine what happens in your own place. And, and there's always a touch test, right? You just start, just start touching mm -hmm. stuff. You make, I, I always tell people that make a mark, touch it, make a mark again and five, you know, or, or uh, put your finger in that same paint five minutes later. And you kind of get an idea in your own atmosphere when something starts to get tacky. Um, but we've got 48 colors in a, uh, in 118 mil size. I'm going to come back into the uh, sky this time with a light blue permanent and the white. Um, and there are 12 colors in a 250 mil size. So if you're painting in more volume um, and I'm going to be, you know, when I look at our reference photo, it's a super smooth transition here. That's not who I am as a painter, though. I like my brush strokes showing. So I, I, I am going to have a transition, but I'm not afraid to take my brush, take my rag, and kind of, I've got the color, but kind of hit it on there like that. So it's a little bit more dry brush, and I can just kind of, you know, make a mark like that, which is a little bit more fun and dynamic to me. And you can see where I've done that same kind of thing here, even though there's a pretty smooth transition with the sky, I've, you know, I've really gotten a bit more expressive, I, I guess is, is, is the best word for that. And then I, again, I can come down here and then pull back into some of this darker and get a little darker. I find in this, that it is much more dark. I, you know, even though we're ref, uh, we're getting a reflection, it's darker down here than it is in the darkest part of the sky up there. And I think what I'm going to do too, I'm going to take a little of that medium magenta, so I can darken this blue, but I'm going to make it a little bit more violet um, because it's cool down here, and I think I can just have a little bit more fun with that. And what I'm doing now uh, in doing this is kind of breaking up the space a little bit more. Um, and, and, and building up texture, building up things that are happening here. Um, but again, keeping it super, super loose. Um, I mean, while I start to, to uh, break up this other area in here, um, why don't you throw some questions at me if we have yes, some. Please. So I had several questions about surfaces. Now you said you're yeah. working on a canvas paper mm -hmm. and I threw one into the teacher's cart for everyone to check out as well. Um, okay. Somebody was asking, how would it work on, say, wood carvings? And uh, there was one that also mentioned watercolor paper, and then somebody else mentioned plastic paper. Which I would yeah, totally. Like, isn't that yeah. yeah, good questions. Um, yeah, wood, absolutely. I mean, 
you know, so so when we're talking about basic acrylic fluids, uh, again, let me just let me kind of do a little a, a little recap here to be able to answer that question for you a little bit more thoroughly and with um, and with clarity. When we're talking about this range, an introductory range, as I mentioned, there's 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 48 colors in 118 mil size uh, and 12 colors in a larger 250 mil size. That's one of the hallmarks of a range like this, as opposed to let's say the uh, Liquitex heavy body range, which has over a hundred colors. That's in the professional range. Same with the soft body, um, acrylic wash, not so many, but, but many, but more than this. And so it's a narrower range. So if you're trying to work, not only just affordably, but let's say you are, I'll go back to the word student or, or just somebody who's you know, starting out or learning. Not that you have to be to use it. I mean, I'm a professional artist. I'm using this. It doesn't, I don't even like the word professional. It, it, we're all artists, right? Let's just, let's just do that. I, I went up back when I used to teach college courses, used to walk in the door and all, uh, and just say, forget I'm the, the professor, forget you're a student. Let's, let's get rid of those terms. We're artists. We're agreeing to be artists. Let's work together with artists. But other people, I worked for an art materials company. I've been doing this. I was a college professor. People might say, well, but you're a professional artist and, you, and you'll sell your work from time to time. You're a professional. Okay, fine, whatever. But I can still use this paint. You can use anything you want. You can use house paint if you want, but there, there can be issues with that. And that's another that's another topic. Um, these, <laughs> like the professional, hear that. <laughs> <laughs> these, like the professional range, yes, absolutely. Can you use them on wood? A hundred percent. I think was the other question, canvas? Uh, watercolor paper. What are, oh yeah, watercolor paper, absolutely. Um, I know somewhere around here, I have somewhere I did on that, and somewhere in the studio. Yeah, hundred percent on watercolor paper. Um, there's two things you might want to think about with watercolor paper. You could work directly with any acrylics on watercolor paper, um, but it, it'll it'll absorb into that paper. The paper being absorbent, um, if you want it, and and that's not a problem but you might not like the way that handles and it might suck into the paper, soak into the paper too quickly for your liking. Doesn't bother me. Um, but in that case, you could tape off your area of the watercolor paper, just like we have here, and you could gesso that. And that would make that less absorbent. Gesso still makes the surface absorbent. It's just gonna temper the natural absorbency of the watercolor paper. So yes, with that. Um, the other question is, is a plastic paper. So I'm, so, uh, so I'm thinking of something like a Yupo or, or a, um, um, like a mylar maybe, yeah, yeah, oh uh, yeah, so yes, you could work on those as well. It's going to be definitely more slippy slidey, right? Because, because you don't have either the texture of the canvas paper we're working on, which is not a heavy, heavy texture. Um, the heavier texture of a watercolor paper, uh, uh, depending on the watercolor paper you're working on, uh, again, another subject, so we're not going to get too like deep into paper here, but if you have a, a smooth surface like a hot press, that's going to be pretty slippy slidey too. If you have something like a, a cold press or a rough, as the name suggests, that's going to be a rougher texture and you could get more dry brush marks, which can be quite fun. I, I like that a lot. Um, so yes on that. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. On all those things um, for sure. So uh, let me go back to my overhead view with this. Um, one of the things I think about introductory ranges, whether it's basic acrylic fluid or our, our original introductory range, which is simply called basics, um, mm -hmm. is that because they are more affordable than the professional range, they can be really uh, quite nice for somebody working on a large project. Um, and, and there's a budget in mind. I mean, there's, I say a budget in mind. There's always a budget in mind, isn't there? I mean... I mean, I, I, I guess unless we're talking Jeff Bezos or, or, or Elon, but there's always a budget in mind, right? Um, so um, that can be something that is, is more helpful in keeping that budget intact. Now, I want to show you what I'm doing right here. I want to differentiate between, I, I put a whole dark mass down, okay? But in reality, it's sort of acting as a middle tone right now. I want to make this darker and I want to make this lighter up here. And there's a little glare because it's wet right now. Okay, so what I've done here is I've taken the cerulean blue that I had, I mixed in a little bit of medium magenta that's making that darker. And I can make that darker still with a little bit of the primary red I'm going to pull in here. And I could even take some of that green that I had originally. 
So what I'm really doing is with, with only a few colors, I'm making a much darker mass here. And then that'll reflect down in the water. Now, when I come down into the water here, what I can do right now, I basically have sort of a triangular shape. I know it's, I know there's an edge here, but it doesn't come to a point, but it's basically a triangular shape of the water. Uh, the sky is basically a triangular shape. So I'm looking at things as basic geometry because we all understand basic geometry. Uh, all right. So what I want to do is I want to break that up now, right? So with my, let's get the glare off there. Yeah, there we go. With my darker tone here, I can come in and say, all right, let me break up this space. And I'm gonna come in here. So I start to get some of the lighter and I'll, I'll bring that back a little bit. I start to get some of the lighter areas and then I can kind of do the reverse, pick out other areas in here. So we get the idea that tree branches are falling on the water. So we get, let's go back to, well, you don't see that as much in this one. Um, you see bigger masses here, uh, but nonetheless, it's breaking up those dark spaces, the light of the water and the darker of uh, the reflections of the, uh, the trees and such in there. And I can come back over here. Likewise, I'm gonna make a darker green and I'm gonna take a little bit of that uh, raw sienna and a little bit of that permanent red. And I'm gonna make a darker mass here and I can come in kind of break up what's happening in this space. Now, one of the things I would suggest to you, and again, we don't have time to get into it now because it's, it's, it's more of a color theory thing. My suggestion to you always, and I've mentioned this on other uh, Jerry's Lives, is that I'm a big believer in you having play sessions. Uh, what, I, what do I mean by a play session? I, it, it, it means oftentimes we come out to our studios and whatever, whatever that means to you, your studio could be your kitchen table. It doesn't matter. It's just a word, right? Studio. Um, you come out to your, your place and, and what you do is you come out in, in mind to, I'm going to make art. Okay, fine. That seems logical, right? That's what you're trying to do. Um, but I think sometimes you need to, to knock it back a notch and just say, I'm going to just experiment with the seven, in my case, the seven colors on my palette. I'm just gonna experiment. What happens when I take a separate piece of paper or a sketchbook maybe, and I say, I'm gonna take white and I'm gonna add one part of every color to white. I'm gonna tint them all. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with two parts white and three parts white to each color. So I can see how do they look when they're tinted? I can now take, the light blue permanent. And I can mix every other color with that to see what happens when I do that. Uh, and, and, and do that in different proportions as well. It'll give me a concept of what this, these seven colors on the palette can do for me. Um, and that's really important. And while that little section dries, I'm, I'm gonna show you here, you can see, so for this, completed painting with basic acrylic fluid. I've got a little study in my sketchbook there. So it's, you notice that it's different, like right? the sky's different in this. I have a I have sort of a different blue there. It's a darker cerulean there. Uh, I would say some of the colors in the, in the water and the reflection of the trees, those are pretty faithful to what's going on here, but it doesn't really matter. In a sketchbook, I'm just playing with composition. I'm playing with big ideas. I'm just kind of getting a feel for it. And it's, um. It's just give, give me a little bit of confidence. It's also a lot of times when I have a reference photo, I like to do a little study in a sketchbook to see, do I even really like this thing? Do I want to pursue it further? Uh, sometimes I, I try a little study in my sketchbook and I go, eh, I don't know. It doesn't interest me like I thought it did. And then here you can see this is a little study for this one right here. Um, so notice uh, I got much lighter back in here in the reeds than I did in this one. So that was something where I said, I like this. I want to do something with it, but uh, I don't like what I have happening in the study, but it's a, it was enough to inform me. And then there's this one, right? Different stage, way different stage right here. Here's our reference photo for that. You can see what I've done. You can see where I really lightened up the greens in here. I broke up that space, really lightened up the greens. I got very deep, kind of a violet blue down in here. You can see, let's get rid of that little 
marker there. You can see where I got kind of brushy here and down here and really loose. And I wanna show you something about that. I want you to take a look at this again. This is important. Uh, let, me, let me get rid of this out of the way for a second and come back down here. And let's get you, I wanna get you closer here. I wanna illustrate this really well. If we look at this image right here and we just do that, if this whole entire image was just this, we would not recognize those as trees at all, right? It's, it's everything here is just a series of abstractions when I take it and, and, I, and I kind of crop it for you. Maybe not the clouds so much, those probably still read as clouds even if I do that. But I think when you break up these other sections, if I, I need another hand, uh, there we go, maybe like that. <laughs> uh, if we break up things like that, they really become abstractions. So it's really, a, 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 it's kind of like, who was the guy? Uh, uh, Carl Jung uh, was a, 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 a psychoanalyst and, and it, it, the idea of gestalt. Uh, the idea of gestalt psychology was that when you look at something like this, you kind of complete the circle with everything else, meaning that this on its own looks very abstract and doesn't look like anything. But when we see the water and we see the sky, we go, oh, well, those must be trees. That's what that is. So you don't have to feel as if you're trying to over render what you're doing. And the same thing I think happens in areas like this. Now, let's get back into our, see what we can do here. Here's the funny thing about this. Al although this is something that would eventually end up like this, I like this right now. This is very bold, very funky, very, very loose and abstract. And I often like to see how, how an abstract is just another word for, for simplifying, right? If that's what abstract means is to simplify. Um, abstract does not mean as many people think that I don't recognize it. You could have an abstract image that you don't recognize. It could be non-representational, but you can have an abstract image. Uh, for instance, a stick figure is an abstracted image of a, of a human being. Um, so it's still recognizable. The reason I say that to you is I like to keep blocking in in this loose manner to try to see how simple can I be and still get the point across? How can I do that? So that's, that's something I like to just process wise, I like to think about. Now, with basic acrylic fluid too, because it is so fluid and I'm just gonna take, I'm gonna peel another piece of paper out of here. I just wanna show you something real quick. Um, this is why I like a product like this. I guess I can peel the whole thing off here because I'm having a hard time getting the, un the other piece off. Yeah, there we go, we'll do this. Um, if I load up my brush, you know, I can take this and really cover with very little, mm -hmm. very quickly, right? I'm not watering it down with water. I can, can I add water to it? Of course I can add water to it. Um, but to be super fluid, uh, like if I had Liquitex soft body paint, I would have to uh, add either some water to dilute it, or I would have to add a possibly a medium, like a fluid medium to make it this fluid. So this is a range of paint that if you like something to be very fluid and you like to move it around very quickly and easily, that's a great paint for you. You could always thicken it up. You could always take a gel medium, right? So if I take a gel medium, right? I can, I'm gonna squeeze out a volume for you there. That's like toothpaste, right? Um, Obviously, anytime I add a huge amount of like that and just I'm taking medium magenta now and a little bit of color, it's going to lighten that. But look how. But that medium is going to dry clear still. Yes, yes, that'll dry. That if if I just had the um, if I just put the gel down by itself, it would dry. Yeah, thank you, Emmy. It would dry clear. Right now we see that and it looks white. The reason we see that looking, and you can see just how gel that like that is because I can leave a, a ribbon of it. Uh, it looks very white because of the water content in it right now. When that evaporates out, right? Because acrylics. Think about what happens with acrylics. Acrylics dry by evaporation. So how, how do they do that? The paint on your surface, the water will evaporate out. Or uh, if you're painting on something like a canvas or even watercolor paper, um, uh, out of the back uh, as, as well. Um, and that'll evaporate out of that paint film. And then what you're left with is just with the acrylic polymer. So if we just use the gel like I put down, 
that would dry clear eventually. Obviously, I'm adding color to that. So that the, the point is moot there. It really doesn't matter um, at that point. But if we go back to this, just to show you, that's how thick we can get with a paint that is, is super, super fluid. So I like to think about this and, and, and I like you to ask yourself a question. What, and let's go back face to face for this real quick. I like to make important points face to face um, or as face to face as I can get through a computer screen. Um, ask yourself what you are trying to do. So if I had all the Liquitex products here with me, in my studio and you were with me and I said, you take whatever you want. And when we have interns, sometimes they come into a room we have in our, in our office and studios at Liquitex and they're like blown away by it because they're seeing the entire rack of color. Like if you went to a jewelry store, right? If you saw the whole thing and you think to yourself, I want all of it. Nah, you don't really, you think you do. It's like thinking you want to eat the whole entire jumbo bag of M&Ms. You think you want to do that, but no, 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 you don't. That's not good for you. The reason I say that with paint is because um, sometimes there's colors that are redundant that you won't need, but you also have to think about what do I want? So uh, what do I want to achieve? So if you're somebody who says, hey, Jimmy, I like working very, very fluid with my uh, paint then I might say, well, we have Liquitex soft body. That's, that's, a, that's a fairly, it's a medium viscosity, but it's fairly, it's fairly fluid. That you, know, you can kind of put it in that category a little bit. As you're talking about that, do you happen to have any on hand that you could show us? Yes, I was I, somebody I was duck asking. down. Yeah. It's, like, it's like walking down the steps. The community, I'm going to go downstairs. And yes, I guess. Okay. Totally. Could you show us the difference in viscosity on the camera? Yeah, totally. You know, somebody totally. was asking about the difference and it's come up several times okay yeah 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 like that's a visual would be so useful Excellent. Uh, okay talking about it you know so this is kind of good i'm going to take actually i it, it, let's go to the overhead view this is actually a color i just happened to pick up um cerulean blue here it doesn't feel like there's a lot in there oh, no there's enough okay so <laughs> um soft body it says soft body it's got a white cap they come in these little things, hopefully, because I don't clean up very well. So hopefully I don't have that clogged up. Oh no, there we go. So I'm gonna put out cerulean blue and you put that out, right? Okay, put the cap back on. I'm gonna put out our cerulean blue hue. This is a good thing to point out. Why does it say ceru uh, cerulean blue hue? Hue is a color, right? Hue is a variation when we uh, when we say that on on paint tubes. Uh, it means that we're using a less expensive variety of a pigment that we might be using in here. So in an introductory range, we can keep it more affordable for you. So let's put some of this out. Let me just do this. And you know the reason I shook it. Let me, let me say that while we do this comparison. The reason I shook it. Because this is extremely fluid, and you'll notice this with Liquitex um, um, acrylic ink as well, which is extremely fluid, the heavier pigments in there, if you have them sitting for a while, can settle down there. So before you squeeze it out, just, just give it a quick shake. So let's put this on here. And that doesn't look much different. You, you see this is spreading yeah, out though. It, yeah, right. it's, it's doing like that. that. But here's the best way to do it. And I'm going to raise this up more. And it's like a, we're going to do a race here. So I'm just going to do this. My money's on the right hand side. There you go. Yeah. Th th yeah. This is our basics acrylic fluid. Mm -hmm. That is exactly what I wanted to show everybody. Yeah. That's the best way to show just how fluid they are. Yes. And they, because they, they this is fluid, this is, this is going to move more. When I, but I'm going to do it to this. I'm going to see if we can see from the side. Yeah, you can. You can. You can see here. That's a thicker edge to that than we have here right now, right? That gets quite thin here because it's really, you know. And if you and if we just do this, let's let's. Um, I'm going to raise up a little bit more. I'm just going to hit this. So I'm going to come out out of screen for a second. Hopefully that wasn't too loud. Yeah, you can really see that, right? So that's a that's a good example for that. So so what are what are we looking at when we compare these two? We're saying okay, this is a professional range. All right, because it's got, first of all, it's got more colors in the range, more colors of the spectrum to choose from. Often in an introductory range, we keep um, less of a range of colors to not overwhelm you because, and this is not always the case, 
but because oftentimes with an introductory range, it might be students, it might be people who are first starting out. And it can just simply be overwhelming to look at a hundred more colors on a rack and go, gosh, what on earth do I need? So in a professional range like soft body or Liquitex heavy body, you might have seven or eight colors in the range. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, seven or eight uh, yellows in the range or, or blues for that matter. Um, and I don't know off the top of my head without looking, but in the basics acrylic fluid range or the, or the basics range, um, which is less fluid than this, that's why this is called basics acrylic fluid, maybe you only have three blues, right? So you just keep the color spectrum a little more focused. Um, you might use a more expensive pigment. Oftentimes we use, uh, in, in, except for in, in the case when we have a hue, oftentimes we use the same pigments. It's just that we use less of a pigment load in the introductory range. Pigment's expensive. It is one of the most expensive components of your paint. So, and this is not just, this is not a Liquitex thing. This is all brands, right? Uh, an introductory range will have less of a pigment load. So it might not be quite as intense, uh, but again, you're able to do that at a more affordable or buy that at a more affordable price. However, the thing that I always, always, this is so important. This is the most important thing to me. We still, the, we, we, not me, but the chemist, uh, and when I've been to the lab, I've, I've gotten to see these wonderful things. They will put both of these through freeze thaw tests. So if you, uh, I don't know, you buy, you go to Jerry's in, in, I don't know, do you have something in Madison, Wisconsin? I don't know. But you go to, you go to, you go to Chicago. Right? One in, I think, um, Connecticut. Yeah, whatever. And any place that gets cold, right? Let's say it's the middle of winter. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you go to, all the way up the coast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you, so it's the middle of winter. You go to Jerry's, you buy some paint, you put it in your car, you run errands, you go home, you do everything. And then the next morning you go, oh, crap, I left this in the car. This is frozen or this is frozen. No mm -hmm. worry. Put it on your counter, put it wherever and let it thaw out naturally. Don't, don't, don't I'll put it, in, stick it in a microwave. Don't do that. Don't uh, put a heat gun to it. Don't uh, boil water and dump it in there like a Dutch oven. Just let it do its thing. Um, do we want to put paint through extremes like that? No, you don't want to leave this on a, on a radiator for you know all winter long and bake it. You don't want to uh, leave it out in your car for the entire winter. No, you don't want to do that. But on the off chance those things happen, you're good to go. What we also do is they both get put in a machine we have, sort of looks like a big microwave oven in the lab, and it's called a Q Sun machine. And you can look up Q Sun machine, just, the, just like Google Q, literally the letter Q, Sun, S-U-N. And it, it is an, an, acceler uh, an accelerated light fastness chamber. So they put the colors in there for, I'm gonna show you some. Uh, do I have it handy? Sorry, I'm looking up on my studio wall. Oh, uh, oh wait, uh, I'm, I'm gonna run over there real quick. Hold on. <laughs> I get to see all the rest amongst, of painting. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> Here we go. I've shown this in other um, Jerry's demos, I believe, but I just wanna I just want to show this here. So we put it in this accelerated light fastness machine. So um, this is a homemade test I did myself. Um, I took a color that we know to not be light fast, a dye-based fluorescent color. Okay, and okay. I, I, what I did actually, I'm covering this because I'm going to reveal something. I actually covered this with a piece of cardboard and I left it outside in my, uh, on, on the, the asphalt outside of my studio for 12 hours in direct sunlight. But we do tests like this in the lab in the Q Sun machine. It uses, uh, I believe, xenon gas. Uh, to do accelerated light fastness. So when I, my, that's just much from being in the studio and just stuff, because uh, <laughs> this is an old example. But um, this was covered. This was exposed for 12 hours in direct sunlight. And that's what happened. Um, because again, keep in mind, this is a dye-based uh, color. It's fluorescence is dye-based, not pigment-based. But they will take both of these and they'll put a swatch and they'll cover part of it and they'll put it in this, like I, the Q Sun, which I call a big microwave oven, basically. <laughs> and that will zap it. They'll do that for 300 hours. And that will be the equivalent of 100 years in, in, a, in sort of a gallery setting. So that's how they can do that. 
and you can ensure that these things won't fade in your lifetime doing it. Um, the other thing I would say about that, what did I want to say about? Oh, uh, Q Sun machines. So again, if you look that up, I'm being a bit geeky here about the science part of it, um, but they're used. It, they're not. Um, uh, they're not exclusive to the art materials industry. That's a, by no means. So they have huge, bigger than I can do here, huge ones um, that they will put your car bumper in. Um, and they'll do that because you buy a car. What's the last thing you want? A year, two years goes by and you're like, my paint's faded. Well, that's no good, right? I'm not paying all that money. So they do it with that too. So, um, outdoor furniture, you know, anything that they want to make sure that it's gonna, that, that's going to withstand light. So we still do that with basic acrylic fluids. So even though you're paying less for it, you don't have to think like, um, yeah, I'm getting crappy quality because that's something I've heard many times when I've talked to groups of people or I've overheard when I've been in artist studios to go, yeah, introductory or student range stuff, that's crappy stuff. No, it's not, it's not at all, it's a misnomer. Um, we've got a few minutes left. I'm gonna try to make a few more marks. Emmy, what other questions might've come up that I can answer? Um, I have two of them that I really wanna to get to. Um, okay. One that I really wanna ask is the finish when these are dry. Um, yeah. How is the finish? Uh, like, is it glossy, satin, flat matte? Yeah. Uh, it's more of a satiny finish. Um, of course, with um, this, uh, whoops, sorry, let's go to the, back to the overhead view. Um, if I add something to it, like a gloss gel, of course, a gloss gel is going to make it more glossy. There are matte varieties as well. I could mix a matte and a gloss together to get a satin variety of a medium. Um, so that, that would change it. But otherwise, well, well, well I should say this. This is important, actually. So yes, more of a satin finish, but that depends on what you're painting on. So if you're painting on some raw piece of wood, because that came up before, that's going to suck up. That's going to, that color is going to suck into that. Or I keep on saying that soak into that. Um, if anything is really porous, that's, that's going to, that's going to look much, much, much more matte. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, what's the other one? So, so um, we don't forget. The other one is they've been asking about um, what you were using in your sketchbook, like your little thumbnails. Are you using the same paint and the same brushes in no. your thumbnails? No, I am not. <laughs> I'm not. And uh, there's a good reason for that. Mm -hmm. um, acrylics can remain a, a bit a bit tacky to the touch, depending on the surface you're working on, but they, they can. Uh, so what can happen, especially if you get a little thicker, with acrylics and I close my sketchbook, I could potentially get a page sticking together. So I am using um, gouache. Mm -hmm. And again, May 30th, the end of this month, it's a, uh, I will be dealing with uh, Windsor and Newton, a designer's gouache here at Jerry's Facebook Live. And we can get into that more, um, but these will not stick together because they have a super, super matte surface. So that's a, that's, a, that's a smart question because I would not want you to work with acrylics in your sketchbook and then you go. Yeah, you wanna know, I, I, like that. I've seen that the hard way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, a I lot of us do. And then, yeah, totally peeled one painting onto the other. It's, it's very frustrating. Yeah, but, that's, its own, that's its own topic, which, but it's, it's, a, it's a good one to get into. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I know we're up against the clock. Any other questions? Um, I think for right now, we got to the, uh, the majority of them, honestly. Okay. If I did miss anything, though, uh, I'll always go back through the comments and make sure to answer them in writing. Yes, and I'm going to just, with our last minute, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share this again. Um, I want to let you guys know, of course, um, of course, check out Jerry's. Um, check out Liquitex official. I, I, of course, I don't run the Jerry's Instagram. I don't run the, uh, the Liquitex official Instagram, but I do run, again, TFACNA, the Fine Art Collective North America. I run that. So if you were on there and you were like, hey, Jimmy, I got a question about something I went over tonight or just any other art materials question, you are more than welcome to write me there uh, and do that. If you are on my Instagram, you are more than welcome to ask me a question. I have people sometimes that are on mine and they write me a question and then I get another direct message and they're like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I, I, I should have wrote to you here. I'm like, no, no, that's cool. We're good. Just, you can, you can write me because I want you guys to, I don't know, to me, um, I've spent my life as an artist educator. I really, really think 
that if someone is teaching you and you don't understand what they're saying, it's incumbent on that instructor, professor, teacher to find a new way to say what they're saying so that you can understand it. It's not that you don't get it. You shouldn't be made to feel that I, I don't understand. I'm no good at this. That's super, super important. I, I think that with all areas, whether we're talking about art, science, any, all that. So don't feel, um, don't feel that way and know that you will struggle in making art and that's okay. I do it all the time. Emmy's a fantastic artist as well. She struggles from time to time. That's what we that's do. <laughs> it's part of the process. It's part of the process. But I thank you guys again. I love doing these Jerry's Facebook Lives. I hope you uh, enjoy having fun with me and Emmy. And I will see you again on May 30th, right back here. Definitely. Now, let me pop myself actually back up on here too. So I can say goodbye. Yeah. Uh, everyone, thank you so much for joining us. And Jimmy, just so you know, everyone has been ooing and awing over all of your work. It's oh. So lovely. Thanks and so every much. time we get off these shows with you, I'm always so inspired and want to go paint and create and everything. It's it's so so great having you on the show. Oh, good. It's it's fun to love what you do. I'm happy to share it with you guys. Thanks yes, so much, everybody. Definitely. So um that is the show, guys. Again, if you are interested in the new uh Liquitex basics fluid that Jimmy just showed us, go to the website jerry'sartorama.com and type in today's class code, which is JL287. And the teacher's cart should come up and show you everything that we've been uh, talking about. And I do still have to add that um, the brush washer basin to the, the teacher's cart that we were talking about too. Um, so I'll do that as soon as we're off of here. And then of course, join me next week, which uh, funny you should mention gouache because next week, uh, Mott and I are gonna be going over gouache basics. So if you're interested in gouache and kind of how the basics of you know the medium works, join us next week and we will see you then and teach you all the things. So I will see you guys then. Thank you so much. Bye. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.